Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the midweek uh, study for the Slang Church of Christ. If you are with us today, you probably know where we are. We are located in Bayan Silang, Silang town proper. Uh, for those of you who are joining us from someplace else in the world, then that means that we are located in Silang, Cavite, Philippines, which puts us about 50 kilometers or 31 miles south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport, located in Metro Manila. Uh, we are glad that you are with us. We hope that our study of God's word, Revelations chapter 7, is where we will be today. I hope that this study will be a benefit to you. And we ask that you, you know, hey, YouTube, like, share, and subscribe, right? Okay, glad everybody's with us. Marvin, open us with a prayer, please. Okay, let, let us pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for this day and another opportunity to learn the beauty of your words. Um, may this meeting today that we have will be useful and may the words and the, learn and the knowledge that we are about to learn, may we apply it to our daily lives. Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um... Everybody open your Bibles to Revelations chapter 7. This is a new chapter for us. Uh, so we are going to take a look at that. And we, let's start off as we normally do with uh, the reading of the chapter so that we can kind of get an idea of what the text is. Chapter 1, Wilma. Chapter 7, verse 1, Wilma. Chapter 7, verse 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth. But no wind might go on earth or sea or against any tree. Verse 2, Cora. First, verse 2, uh, chapter, Revelation 7, verse 2 says, Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God, he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Okay. Verse three, please. Uh, Vanessa. Verse three says, do not harm earth, the earth or the sea or the sea until we have killed the servant of our God on their forehead. Verse 4, Chrissy. Four says, And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of sons of the sons of Israel. Verse 5, please, Julie. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over Marvin. Five, Marvin. Verse five, 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of God. Gad. It's Gad. Gad. Okay. Verse six, Julie. And verse six, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, and 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven, Rio. Verse seven. 12,000 from the tribe of Simon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi. Hold on. That's Simeon. Simeon. Okay. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Ishakar. Right. Eight, cat. Verse eight, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. Nine, please. Uh... Revelations chapter 7, verse 9. 
Mary Faye. Verse 9 says, After this I look, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Okay. And Wilma? Then, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Eleven, please, sweetheart. Eleven says, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Twelve, please, Vanessa. <laughs> and twelve says, saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor the power and might to be our God forever and ever. Amen. 13, Chrissy. 13, then one of the elder addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? 15, Marvin. 14. 14 says, Yes. I said to him, Sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, now 15, Julie. 15, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. 16, Rio. Verse 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. And 17, Katrina. 17, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Okay, um, what do you see happening here? in chapter seven. Mary Faye? <laughs> I, uh, I came in late. Okay. Wilma? Uh, it says here that all tribes and peoples and languages are being talked about. Okay. That's the, I, okay. The salvation I'm sorry, Very good. Cora? Uh, I was wondering because I read a little bit of, of the um, paper that you sent us. Uh, does it mean that only 144,000 from the tribes are going to be saved? Seems like uh, they're trying to protect the 174, 144,000. Well, I'm glad that you asked that question, and we will cover that once we get to it. Uh, the material that you have is um, good material to use, but it's not the totality of my material. Uh, okay. And if you will also notice, read below where it says 144,000 in your textbooks, you will also see it says multitude. Yes. Okay. Understanding within the book of Revelations, a lot of stuff is symbolic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the 144,000 is not the totality of those that are going to be saved or those that are going to go to heaven. Uh, although that is the contention by some false teachers like the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, the 144,000, we will discuss that when we get to there. But understanding that's not the uh, the number that's going to go to heaven. The number that's going to go to heaven will be the multitudes. Is this yeah. something that is this something that God is protecting the saints? That's a symbolism, and what the symbolism is is that because of a hundred, there are. Do we understand, as I've probably spoken about before, that within the Jewish sim system, numbers had meaning. 
the the meanings were the numbers. So the twelve dozen, the hundred and forty four thousand, is representative, and we'll speak about that in more detail. Okay, Vanessa. Oh. What does chapter seven look like to you? So are they celebrating the coming of the God with all the tribes and celebrating with the palm branches and singing angels? Okay. Chrissy. I observed that there is a four angel standing in the four corners. Very good. We're going to talk about two because that's symbolism too. Marvin. Um, chapter seven means that uh, the total destruction of all things will be temporarily in, uh, ceased uh, be until the 144,000 of Israel will be uh, sealed. Okay. Julie. What? <clears throat> well, sir, um, God protect his people, even the Israel even 144,000 Israel still, but God show us mercy to them. Okay, Rio. As far as my understanding, a great number of people will be saved by God. Well, <sighs> we have to be careful, okay? Because if we realize that how long has it been since Christ came to earth? 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Uh, will it be a huge number of people that have followed Christ in those 2,000 years? The answer is going to be yes. Will it be the majority of the world's population? No. And the answer to that is no, okay? So it's difficult, The when we start attaching numbers, how I don't know how many people we're going to see in heaven because not only must we understand that there have been 2000 years since Christ, we have to understand that there were 3000 years prior to Christ also. So 5,000 years, if, uh, one out of every 100,000 people made it, how many is that going to be? A lot. <laughs> Katrina. Um, chapter 7 is uh, a continuation from our previous study. It uh, is. That's a We're good in, catch. We're in, the great, uh, we're in a great tribulation, earthquake and Many things will happen. So after that happening, this will be the next. And this peoples or chosen peoples will be sealed. Earth. Very good. Good job. Uh, and by the way, good job by everyone. Well, let's start off with chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh, we want to start with an understanding that the contents of chapter 7 are really... Um, a space or a parenthetical statement between the events that are revealed in the sixth and the eighth chapter. Herein is the answer to the chat question in Revelations chapter six, verse 17. Would you like to get that for me, please, uh, Mary Faye? Which one, sir? Revelations chapter 6, verse 17 presents us with a question. What is that question? 6, 17 says, For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it? So who can withstand it? That's the answer. Who's able to answer? The answer so is that no one can stand up to God's judgment. <laughs> Now, the heavenly scene that we're going to see in chapter 7 follows the overthrow of the evil that we saw, as Katrina said, at the end of chapter 6. I'm going to take just a second here and explain something to you guys. Um, 
Are you aware of the format, the original way the Bible was written? It was on scrolls. There was no chapter and verse. It just read like a letter. Uh, the purpose of having the chapter and verse is they were added by printers with the purpose of making it easier for so that if I said to you, go to evening class, uh, go to the story of David and Bathsheba. You don't have to search through the skull. Where do you go? Second Samuel chapter 12, right? Right? Somebody from the evening class? Yes, sir. You, you know how to find that, right? And since you know what chapter and verse is, do we sometimes struggle finding the right material now that we have chapters and verses? And the answer is yes, when we're first starting, right? <clears throat> Can you imagine how difficult it would be if there were no chapter and verse? It would be considerably more difficult. Um, the saints on earth have been assured of their welfare. If we have died in the faith, and by the way, if you guys remember, what was the book that we studied getting ready for Revelations? First and Second Thessalonians. First and Second Thessalonians. So go to First Thessalonians chapter four and verse thirteen. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse thirteen. And Wilma, will you start us there, please? Each one thousand two hundred sixty six. John Peter. Chapter four, verse thirteen. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Okay. So what they're telling us in verse thirteen is that we should not grieve for those who have passed on ahead of us. Passed on ahead of us. Um, something keys in here very good that we have studied from 2 Samuel chapter 12. Does anybody remember what happened when David had been fasting and praying for his baby and it died? He, he was, um, he did not eat and he did not sleep. After the baby died? No, after the baby died, uh, right. he didn't sleep. What did he say? Uh, he said that uh, something to the effect that uh, it was done by uh, it was done. It's over, so he will just have to wait for the time of, of for him to come to see the child when he when he goes to heaven. Very. That's actually the quote I'm looking for. Is he he has died? He has passed. He will not come back to me. Yeah. But I shall go to him. Yeah. Okay, First Thessalonians chapter 4, 14, please, Vanessa. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. See, we have a hope. 15, Chrissy. 15 says, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Very good. 
17, Marvin. Okay. And chapter, I, I mean, verse 16, sir? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. It says here, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay. Chrissy, next, uh, Katrina, next, uh, Julie, next verse, please. And 17, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. We will be called up, right? 18, real, stop us there. Verse 18, therefore, encourage one another with this race. Encourage one another. The total desolation of all things is restrained until the saints are sealed. Now, 7 1 opens and it says, after these things. John is not really laying out for us a timeline of world events or events that will necessarily follow one another in a sequential or consecutive order. He's simply stating that after he saw the preceding vision of the events, he is now seeing more visions. And he reasserts or affirms that the vision of the sixth seal is complete. And he now sees another vision of God's people who are under his care. By the way, you see where it says four angels? Yes. Four, four angels? Standing. Uh, for let me check the, the let me check on your teacher. See how your teacher's doing. Katrina, what is the meaning of the 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 Greek word? What is the Greek word for angel and what does it mean? Angelos, meaning messenger of God. Thank you. Your teacher must be doing okay. <laughs> it is. Good job, Katrina. Yes, it's a messenger. So the four angels are a messenger, and we can see this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Start us there, please. Katrina? Katrina? Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us give its light. And the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Okay. 29, 30, please, Mary Faye. 30 says... Then will appear the sign of the Son of all men in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, we want to be careful here when we're reading 2430, because it says all people who are on the earth will mourn, right? Yes. We want to make sure we understand that it, what it really means is all people who belong to the earth. If you belong to Christ, are you going to be are you going to be mourning if you look up in the sky and see him coming back for judgment day five minutes from now? No, no right? We're not mourning, but the people who all the people who belong to the earth will mourn. But that's not us. 31, Cora. 31. Yes, and he please. Was Matthew 24. 24, 31. 31. And he will send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. 
and they will gather together his elect from the four wings from one end of heaven to the other. Now, when we compare 31 to 30, we see what I was talking about. Those who are elect, those who have chosen Christ, will follow him. Now, after it says four angels, it says four corners of the earth, right? Yes. Well, this is symbolic of the entire world. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. You guys are jumping around on me today for some reason. Mary Faye. She'll be back. Wilma. Isaiah 11, chapter 11, verse 12. Yes, please. He will write a signal for the nation, and will assemble in the banish of Israel, and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth. That's a symbolism of the entire world. We're in the book of Isaiah already. Give us Isaiah 24 and 16. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 16. Vanessa. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 16 says, for the end of the earth, hear song of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away. Woe is me, for the traitor, traitors have betrayed. Will betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. Okay, so the entire world is what is represented by the four corners here. We're also going to see where it says, holding the four winds. The messengers, angelos of God, are restraining those forces that will be released upon those who persecuted the saints, the people of Christ. Jeremiah 49, 36. Jeremiah 49, 36. Chrissy? Are we all there? Jeremiah 49 verse 36 says, And I will bring upon Elam the four winds of the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come. So, by the way, this is a pro this is a messianic prophecy. Do you see the prophecy here where it says there is no nation on the earth from which the nation of Elam will not come? Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes. Are you Jewish? I'm not. I don't think you guys are either. Therefore, we will all be part of the nation, even though through the Messiah, even though we were not part of the earthly Israel. Uh, Marvin, give me Daniel, please. Daniel chapter 7, verse 2. 72. Okay. Daniel chapter 7 verse 2 says, Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. The four winds of heaven were stirring up, right? Uh, we also notice that it says earth, it says sea, and it says tree. 
all three of these symbols are representative of the earthly enemies that had launched their attack against the community of God, the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ in the New Testament times? Anybody? Um, the church. The church. Very good. So those who have persecuted the church are getting ready to get what they have coming. Uh, the seal of the living God. Those who are sealed by God are those who have their salvation in Jesus Christ. Give me Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Uh, Marvin, is it your turn, Marvin? I think so. I'm done, sir. Oh, Julie. Romans chapter 8, verse 16, that's here. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We are the children of God. We have our salvation sealed. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Katrina? Ephesians 1.13 In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. So we have been sealed. Why? Because we are those that are saved. The salvation in Christ came to us by God's grace. And the purpose is to protect us against the evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Cora. Just a minute. 1 Corinthians 10, 10 verse 13. 13. It says... No, tempta <clears throat> no temptation has overtaken, to overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also protect, protect uh, provide a way, way out so that you can endure it. Okay, so we see this, that we are being protected by God. It says, do not harm. Well, the destruction of God's enemies is restrained until the elect are gathered into the fold. And we saw that in Revelations chapter 6 and verse 11. Revelations chapter 6 and verse 11, Mary Faye. Revelation chapter 6 verse 11 says then each of them was given a white then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants their brothers and sisters were killed just as they had been so we're waiting for God to seal us. We are waiting for God to put aside the time. Now, God foreknows those who are his. He knows how many saints there are. I don't. Therefore, the destruction of the enemies of Christianity will not occur until the foreknown or predetermined number of saints is reached. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1, Rio. Judgment on the elders. 
Ezekiel 9 verse 1. Then he cried in my ears with a loud voice saying, Bring near the executioners of the city, each with his destroying weapon in his hand. Okay. Um, and it says on their foreheads. This is the most notable place of the individual. We're going to notice that there's a mark that is placed here in order to identify our allegiance. The figure that indicates the righteous are clearly identified. You're already in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 9 in verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 9 in verse 4, Wilma. Verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. And the Lord said to him, Pass through the city, through Jerusalem, and put a mark on the forehead of the man who sighed and groan over all the abominations that are committed in it. That's four. Five, please, Vanessa. And five said, and to the others, he said, in my hearing, pass through the sheep, the sheep after him and strike. The, your eyes shall not bear, and you shall show no peace. Okay, and verse six, please, Chrissy. And six says, give old men outright, young men and maid men, maidens, little children and women, but touch no one on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the house. Very good. So we see that those who are followers of the world are clearly identified and those that are followers of Christ are clearly identified. The destruction must wait until all the saints are identified. God's work among men and his judgment upon the wicked depends upon the protection of the saints. The destruction of the wicked shows us the deliverance of the righteous. Now, this is in verse four is we're going to get to Korah's question. We got plenty of time. Uh, it says 144,000. The number 12 finds its symbolic meaning in the 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament, who were God's called out people. In the context here, the 12 tribes indicate all of God's people in any dispensation. How many dispensations have there been? Name at least three for me, please. How many dispensation of what? How many dispensations? How many covenants of God have there been? There's actually been five, but I'll set it for three. Uh, what covenant do we live under now? Name one, class. New Co Testament. Christian, right? We live under the law of Christ. Uh, Benjamin? Say it again. Benjamin? No. Uh, what was the law that was in effect just before? What was the covenant that was in, in effect before the Christian covenant? Say it, I heard somebody said talking. Who said it? Say it, the Levitical or Mosaic law, right? What was the one in effect before then? The before Abrahamic the... Oh, yeah. or patriarchal mm -hmm. covenant. Okay. Abrahamic. By the way, I'll go ahead and give you, what was the one before the Abrahamic or a patriarchal covenant? Uh, that's supposed to be around Genesis time, correct? Yeah, I know. But before the Abrahamic covenant was the covenant of Noah. I will no longer destroy the earth with water. 
Uh-huh. And what was the covenant before Noah? Moses. Moses came after Noah. Uh, Jacob. Is it Jacob? Adamic. Mm -hmm. Who was the first man? Adam. 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 Did God have a covenant with Adam? Can I write that down? Adamic. Adamic. Yes. The next one is um, Noah. Covenant with Noah. Noah. Abraham. 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 Uh, Mosaic or Levitical. Then the New Testament. And the law of Christ. Did and let's let's think about what I'm saying here. So I want you guys to understand it, okay? Did God have a covenant with Adam? Yes. Is what that was the covenant? That he had not to eat any. He can eat all the fruits except one. Which tree was that, by the way? The tree of life, uh, the tree of life, knowledge of life and evil. Good and evil. Very good. Good, 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 good. Uh, and if he lived by that covenant, what was his reward going to be? Uh, we're going to be living in heaven. <laughs> we're going to be living in the Garden of Eden, right? Garden of Eden. Did they break the law? Uh, it's Eve who broke the law. <laughs> Adam broke the law too. Okay, Adam broke the law too. But Eve did do it first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did the people live by the Adamic covenant afterwards? And the answer to that is no. Uh, we talk. We can talk about the Tower of Babel. We can talk about the. We spoke about Noah last week. The world. Every thought was evil continually. Okay. After the Mos after the Noah covenant, what came next? What is the Noah's covenant? Besides the. He's not going to destroy the world with water again. Oh yeah. It's going to be fire. Abraham. Abrahamic, you follow me and I, your people shall have the land for all eternity. But they have to serve God. How did they do on that? They did not. They didn't do very good. And the Mosaic Covenant, which was a completion of the Abrahamic Covenant, how did they do on that one? Not good. They didn't do real good. And by the way, look around you. How is the world doing with the Christian covenant today? Are they getting a passing score? No, right? And that's not God's version of practice because his version of a passing score is a 100. Uh, John has in mind here the 144,000 that you ask about, Cora. He has in mind here a symbolic number that represents the true Israel of God by faith. That number represents total and complete. It is not necessarily a specific number. Uh, it's not 144 thousand complete that's not the number and by the way that's a teaching that comes from the uh, jehovah's witnesses as well uh the great multitude because after john saw the hundred and forty four thousand he now sees a great multitude and that's those who have been sealed and therefore protected by god the multitude are those triumphant saints who have passed beyond the earth.
and they have entered heaven. Before the throne and before the lamb, uh, the picture here is of a happy or jubilant, the have exalted multitude in the presence of the lamb. Um, make a note there, if you're, by the way, next to Revelations chapter seven, verse nine, if you have your own Bible, write Revelations chapter four, verses one to four, Revelations chapter five, verses six to 11. They are before Revelation four, four, one to four, Revelations five, six to 11. Okay. They are before God who is in and on the throne. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Uh, Vanessa, is it your turn? Chapter 15, verse 24 says, Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and, pow and power. Verse 25, Chrissy. 25 says, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. 26, Marvin. 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. 27, Julie. And 27, for God has put all things in subject subjection under his feet but when it says all things are put in subjection it is plain that he is accepted to put all things and subjection under him okay 28 cat 28 when all things are subjected to him then the son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. Okay. And we see here where it says clothed with white robes, right? Yeah. Since we've already spoken about that, somebody tell me what those white robes represent. Purity. Salvation. Close. What? It is salvation. I got it. No in my... Purity. Righteousness. Salvation is representative of purity and righteousness, but that's what the right white robes mean. Uh, you see where it says they had palm branches in their hands? Yes. Okay. What do palm branches represent? Class, what do palm branches represent? What verse is that? Seven. Nine. Nine. Worship. Close. Okay, I'll go ahead and give it to you guys. Uh, palm branches were used by the Romans and they symbolized the victory of returning soldiers. With victory, there was great rejoicing and therefore the saints who have died in Christ are greatly rejoicing because of the victory that they have accomplished, not on their own, but through the blood of Jesus Christ. Give me 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And Cora, I'll pick on you for the last one today. John. 1 John, little John. 1 oh, John, okay, hang on. 1 John 4. Chapter 5, verse 4. Chapter 5, verse 4 says, For everyone born of God's 
overcome the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So we have a victory, right? Victory that overcomes the world. <laughs> we have a victory. What is our victory? Mary Faye? Victory is the salvation of Christ. Very good. Rio. Yes. You agree with her? Yes. <laughs> okay. Cat. She has not come to the world. Katrina. This victory. Victory. Oh, God. I think she's locked up. Julie. Victory and salvation of God. Very good. Marvin. Same, sir. Okay. Chrissy, you look still locked. Are you? Yeah, I think so. Wilma. Now, there you go. Chrissy. <clears throat> Okay, well, love is a Wilma. Very good. Vanessa. Yes, sir. I agree with them, sir. Okay, very good. 